What's up gamers today is my Hogwarts Legacy review. Hogwarts Legacy is taking place in a Harry Potter world in the late 1800s, but there's stuff in this game that the fans of the series will notice. But does it save the game from being another blend open world game, or does it have the magic the Harry Potter series is known for? We'll find out today. While this game is not the best looking game of all time, this game does look really good. I say it's all about the same level of Horizon for Ben West, but there's a glaring problem facial animations. I would say about 70% of the time the NPCs is talking to you, they have this blank stare on their face that looks soulless and it gets weird. So overall I say the graphics are about 7 out of 10. They could definitely improve on some things, like I said the facial animations, but man, I ain't gonna lie, just that soulless look they have. And this would be like after intense cutscenes too, where they're just like, oh, like, they just discovered a brand new port key, just for example. It's like, then they'll just have this blank extension. Well, I wonder if that was part of the plan the whole time. And it's like, they rarely move, too. It's just like this... How, how do I put it best? Well, I think I did put it best. Soulless. But graphically, the rest of the game does look really good. And the actual cutscene cutscenes look really good. In fact, I would say they're well animated and the monsters, the goblins, all that stuff look really good too. It's just that facial animation. And mind you, this is the facial animation you're going to see 90% of the time or 70% of the time because it's all just this blank stare that just really is unsettling. Like to the point, I almost feel like I'm at the freaking NPCs look into my soul and make me wonder what kind of life choices did I make when I'm playing a game that has an NPC staring into my very fucking being. Gameplay wise, Hogwarts Legacy is fun, period. I had some criticisms earlier about how spells were placed and how there's a lot of spells, but the fact is a lot of them you don't need. I really liked comboing the spells, especially like the pull and fire spell, I think it was a uh, Igno. And it was definitely more tactful when you had to battle the wizards because the wizards themselves could put up shields and you have to have a quarter, uh, I guess what you say, a quarter, uh, the same type of spell. I don't know why I'm having a struggle, you know, finding words in my brain, but <laughs> um, I would say that overall though, battling the beasts definitely took a little bit more of a learning process because you have to learn to exploit the weakness and I did kind of find that hilarious how at one point, like, a toad was, like, the hardest thing I fought. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there fucking balling through the wizards like there's no problem. Just because you do have to kind of learn how to look for certain cues and use a core... I get, again, I can't remember the fucking word I'm trying to say. But the spell you need to use to actually counter them. Like the toad, for example, will have this moment where it has this ton and it kind of levitates itself a bit. You have to use the levito spell to basically get up in the air. Then you slice where your offensive spells because that's the moment of weakness. Wizards really don't have that, but they overall are kind of a... I guess the best way to put it is a, a little less spongy fucking trolls, for the record. Um, take a lot of hits until you learn the freaking forbidden spells. Which we're we're going to get into how you, you get those spells down the road. But it's like, overall the combat's still really fun. I would say that it definitely makes the game an easier process to get through. Because it's like, it's still fun to play. Even like, I would say 20 hours later, I was like, damn. I'm still having a good time with this and I was pleasantly surprised by the stuff I was be able to learn just like okay you know like I say you learn how to combo these things correctly it makes these freaking enemies a breeze so I say it's about a 10 out of 10 yes this is all completely subjective but I find it very fun I hope that if there's ever a sequel they don't even really touch the combat they just need to Maybe have different spells and maybe do something a little bit more with the dark arts. Because it feels like it was only limited to the three forbidden spells. Which again, we'll get into how you talk, get those later. Now we gotta talk about the open world. I'm gonna be honest here folks. This is where a lot of the game starts falling apart in my opinion. So... Have you played an open world game where there's a bunch of activities and enemy bases and trials and stuff that all seem like they're kind of good until you keep doing them and it's like, ah, uh, this stuff's a 
it's a little bland. It's a, it's, a, it's a little tasteless at times. And, uh, the world itself, not exactly, I guess you would say, magical. Besides, uh, besides Hogsmeade, which, yes, looks like Hogsmeade from the movies, but granted, you don't see, really see Hogsmeade in the movies, um, everything just kind of started feeling bland. It just, it just, that's the word I would use best, bland. It just all started melting in with each other. Now, yes, there's stuff, you know, you could do with the room of requirement, how you could catch, you know, little creatures and you could groom them and, you know, freaking, you know, feed them and you'll get material to upgrade your equipment, all that stuff. That's, that's fine. That stuff's like, it works, but that's kind of it. It just works. It never really does anything exciting to the point that I'm going to be honest, I'm doing this review, and I didn't 100% the game. I definitely got through the whole campaign, but I didn't go out of my way to do, like, all the side quest stuff. Because after a point, well, I guess I would say more of the open world activities, it just started feeling the same. Like, I just got uninterested in it. And the more I kept playing through this game... I was just like, okay, besides, up, you know, changing how my character looks, what am I interested in? And really, I wasn't interested much. Most of the open world stuff just kind of melts together. It doesn't melt together, you know, good either. It melts together in like in a way it's like you could tell the developers were looking at other open world games like Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon... Uh, Assassin's Creed, freaking Far Cry, stuff like that, and say, okay, those things they do, we gotta do too. And it's like, why? Why don't you guys put more character into this? Why don't you put more choices in this? Like, yeah, again, it's all just that kind of open world formula you're used to. It's exactly the open world formula you're used to, almost down to the T. So, I'm gonna be honest, I think I have to give this I have it actually written down here. I gave it a 4 out of 10. I'm now thinking about it again. And rethinking this, you know, script <laughs> a little. Um, I'm going to say it's a 3 out of 10. Because, like, it just... Uh, so much of it did not work for me. And I... Like, t on a technical level, it worked. And I would actually like to please report that this game is relatively glitch-free. I did notice a couple here and there. But, um... Yeah, just... It's bland. It's the word I use. It's, it's bland. It's it's tasteless. It's like if someone were to hand you, like, you know, a subpar dish. It's not the worst dish you've ever had, but it's getting, it's getting, it's starting to border that territory. And for a game about Hogwarts and, you know, the magical world of Harry Potter, this, ironically enough, doesn't feel very magical. Then, of course, the coup de grace, the thing that might be able to carry the rest of the game story to put it best this story is bleh just like the open world it's just bleh so when i'm talking about this i'm talking mostly about the main campaign the main campaign is your typical you know oh i guess you would say chosen one story like your character inexplicably has this you know ability to sense ancient magic never explained how he discovered how he had this by the way it just happened by the way, this kid's parents are never mentioned once. So I think this character was literally created uh, when you push, you know, enter in a freaking character uh, creator menu. Which also I want to say, shout out to the fact that you actually can make a trans character in this game. Pretty cool. Especially from a person who, uh, let's just say, that has a questionable history with trans people. Uh, JK Roll. But it's just... After the first couple of hours, it doesn't really pull you in. I mean, at first it starts off pretty good. There's this goblin and he can use, you know, this ancient magic, kind of like how you can. And how he has like this human, you know, that works with him and all that stuff. It starts off really interesting. But then the game just kind of becomes the, go here, do this trial. Go here, do that trial. Go there, do this. And go back there. You're all going back to the same fucking area. And again, those uh, 
bland facial animations pop their ugly fucking faces again. Especially weird considering some of these people are portraits. So it's like, uh, can someone at least look at me, please? Because this is uh, kind of weird. And I'm going to be honest. I think what really hurt the story is just like, I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew exactly down to the middle what was going to happen. I'm like, there'll be that point where, you know, maybe the character's not, ha you know, not their best. Maybe uh, someone will doubt him and all that stuff. And that just creates this big time gap where the portrait people, the keepers, are like, oh, suddenly like, well, I don't know if I trust you. I need time to think about this. And it'll be like almost a fucking, you know, week or almost a month you could go without you know dealing with the main quest i guess you would say in game time and the portrait will be like okay i think i trust you all side it's like oh my god this is this is not paced well and the rest of the main story is just takes a break until then and that's when you gotta do all the side quests which i'm gonna be honest here most of the side quests um not that good not saying that they're they're all bad, because there is one particular stands out. And when I'm talking about side quests, I'm talking about those, you know, friendship side quests where they actually have a branch and storyline. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, the two of them were just like the most typical good guy stuff I could think of. And here's the thing. I want to come into this game being a dark wizard. I want to be a bad guy. But you don't get to be a bad guy in this game. You don't get to learn the Forbidden Curses until you do one particular storyline, which is the only storyline, in my opinion, that's worth a damn. Because the rest of them are stereotypical good guy stuff. Oh, you're helping this girl gain her confidence back. Oh, look, you're helping saving endangered animals. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't this what a dark wizard would do? And it's so weird because this game advertised that you could be a dark wizard, but I'm like, Besides using the forbidden spells, I don't know how you freaking, you know, become a bad guy in this. I even think I saw, like, some mod where maybe they could attack, the, you know, the student NPCs. But it's like, I get, that's clearly a mod. So, yeah, no, this doesn't work the way it's supposed to. It's not, well, it does work the way it's supposed to, but it's just not fun. I don't get to play my character. I play the character the game wants me to play as. And while there's this kind of subtext about how goblins are treated as second class citizens and stuff like that, they never do anything with it. See, like right there, there's a golden opportunity to tell an actual story with meaning and they don't do anything with it. Now, the one side quest I think is good has to deal with Sebastian Swallow. Let's see if I remember this guy's name right. Yeah, Sebastian Swallow. And I'm going to be honest. I thought that story was good. I damn near say I think that was actually better than the main story. So basically, the the prox of what this whole thing is about is if you, you know, meet this kid who's a Slytherin, he goes down this kind of like dark storyline where this is how you learn how to use the, you know, unforgivable curses as they're actually called in the canon. And this was like, okay, this is what I want. This is like a game that actually lets me have choice. This is the part that's like, this is good. And you're kind of reminded you're going down this dark path all the time. But Sebastian's doing it for good reasons. But as the old expression goes, bad, bad people start with good attentions. I forget how the, the, the old go, that expression goes. But it starts going down this road. And I was like, man, this is actually kind of good. Like, I dare say better than the actual, the main story. Now, I'm not going to go into spoilers or anything, but it didn't even end the way I thought it was going to end. I thought it was going to end in a t stereotypical, ha, 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 we all have a happy ending. It's like, no, uh, there's, 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 no one has a happy ending on this one, and I kind of like that. I don't know, maybe I'm just a downer. And again, I have it as a 4 out of 10. I'm going to say 3 out of 10. Honestly, I feel like that the... The stories of this game just kind of let me down. To the point it's just... I don't know, man. I, I think this game could be so much better, but it just doesn't do it. So, overall, what will I say about Hogwarts Legacy? I'm going to say Hogwarts Legacy is a, a average game. I'm going to say that it is a 4 out of 10. 
I, I like I said, I put a little bit below just because the stories in, the, in this game are not very good. And again, all that other stuff you're doing, that's stereotypical, help this village, help that village. The world, like I said, doesn't really feel like it's full of magic, ironically enough, unless you're, you know, doing the activities, which is then it's like these activities are so boring, it might as well not even be there. Um, I just feel like this game has so much potential. It does. It has potential, but it never does anything with it. It just kind of sits there with his hand up his ass, and it's like, oh, well, Harry Potter. Yeah? So? It, it's... The Harry Potter IP can only carry you so much. And I feel like this... Yeah, just... It's an average experience, even kind of below average, a 4 out of 10. Not the best game I've played... That's for damn sure. I think Ghost of Tsushima even fucking beats this game out. I, I'm going to say this. This is going to sound a little controversial. I think Days Gone and Horizon 2 beat this game out. Because while I'll say, you know, Horizon 2 is a mess when it comes to a story, at least I was interested in the story. At least it kept me going. This, on the other hand, just. I kind of at some point just wanted to stop playing. In fact, there were long periods of time I just stopped playing this game because I was like. I don't want to play it. I just don't want to. Yes, it's, you know, on a technical level, it looks good. Yes, it performs well in performance mode. Most of the time, it was 60 FPS. It almost felt locked, but there were times where it kind of dipped at times. But yeah, just a 4 out of 10. I, I thought much better of this, man. I thought the Harry, the, the, the so-called dream Harry Potter game would carry me, but... Outside my first impressions, the game just kind of started uh, falling apart. So, what do you guys think of Hogwarts Legacy? Do you think it's a average game or below average? Or do you think it's one of the best open world games ever made? Le let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that YouTube algorithm BS. This is that PlayStation Gamer telling you this magic game needs a little bit more magic. Have a good day.